So guys, this incident right here is one of the most controversial incidents in Chicago history, and it's an incident that I had made known several years ago on the channel, and it, it got a lot of backlash, man. Ooh, man, this, con this conversation right here is hot. People got very strong feelings about this. One of the most influential guys in the history of Chicago, as you guys know, is Larry Hoover. He's basically like the black version of Al Capone, okay? Probably the most influential black gangster like in Chicago history. So he's, you know, one of the founders of the Gangster Disciples. But when he was young, it didn't used to be GDs. It was a gang called the Supreme Gangsters. And there was kind of like an evolution of, of that gang structure uh, into what it is today. And he really had tried to depart from that for a while and uh, change GD to represent growth and development. He, as you guys know, is doing life in a supermax prison right now. And whether or not he'll ever be pardoned and let out, I don't know. But uh, that's a topic for a whole other video. Anyways, I owe him and just all of his supporters, I would say, a caveat and a clarification about this incident. Because, as you guys know, the worst thing you can be in the streets is a snitch. And I had said that Larry Hoover had snitched when he was 18, when he was already the leader of the Supreme Gangsters on a guy named James Heisman, who was one of his ops, that had actually walked right up into his high school and shot him. For this video, we got to go back to September of 1968, and I'm going to clear up what we know, because we don't know for a fact what happened, but what I said at first may be inaccurate, okay? Because that's the police, the police's version of events. And back then, guys, the police, especially in the black community, in all communities really, but especially in the black community, you know, they used to lie all the time on reports. And even to this day, they, you know, they still lie a lot to cover for each other. And sometimes to get people convicted, this... In this situation, though, I'm not sure if they were lying. But you guys, you guys, you know, can make up your own minds about this. And, and to, to be honest with you, I don't know if making up one's mind about this is really appropriate. It's just kind of one of those unanswered questions. So, anyways, getting to the story, he was in, in Parker High School in 1968. He was 18. There were two 15-year-olds with Larry Hoover at that time in the hallway. Now, whether or not he knew them or was affiliated with them, I don't know. That was just the situation. They were just present. Okay. James Highsmith, who was one of his ops, and a guy named Leonard Longstreet walk up into the school. Now, whether or not you could do that in this day and age when there's metal detectors and cops, you know, at the front doors of these schools, I don't know, I don't know if that would be possible today, but they just voted to remove police from schools, which I think was a really bad decision because of, precisely because of stuff like this. Gangbangers all the time say they got to stop going to school because their ops are coming to school to catch them over there. So anyways... Larry Hoover was in school. Longstreet and Highsmith walk into school. Longstreet tells Highsmith when he sees Larry Hoover, he says, quote, burn him. Uh, Highsmith opens fire and shoots Larry Hoover. Now, Larry Hoover obviously was not killed, but this was apparently, okay, the account that Larry Hoover had given to the police. So... Who knows if that, you know, who knows? If, I mean, we know Larry Hoover was shot. We do know that. Okay. And Highsmith and Longstreet were arrested. Now, here's the interesting part. They were not charged with attempted murder of Larry Hoover, which is typically what would happen when you shoot somebody, right? I mean, technically, you know, that, that is what they could have charged him with. But to my knowledge, there was, there was no video evidence. Like, this is 1968. And the only witness to what had happened would have been Hoover and the two 15-year-olds, if the 15-year-olds were even looking when this was going on. So Highsmith was only charged with aggravated with a battery on Larry Hoover. I think aggravated battery uh, or assault or something. Like, it was some lesser charge, and he was sentenced to one to five years. Um, so no attempted murder charge. Okay, now why you know CBD made that decision, I don't know, but Larry Hoover. Okay, I mean, James Highsmith said that Larry Hoover did not snitch on him. This is the most important part of the video. James Highsmith contradicted 
CPD's statement. Now, whether or not Larry Hoover made that statement or made whatever statement he allegedly made or didn't make in front of Highsmith or whether or not he was, you know, somewhere else when the police questioned him, uh, I don't know. But it typically goes down like the police right down there are going to say who shot you, just like with Tupac. So Highsmith would have been there when, who you know, they say who shot you and Hoover just kept his mouth shut. So Highsmith said that Larry Hoover never snitched. <clears throat> so that's the one thing that I need to clear up. You know, I had given CPD's version of events and Highsmith gave a completely different version of events. Now, Highsmith today is like, he's a community activist and uh, he's like a neighborhood here. I mean, he's like, no, nobody is against him now. And Hoover forgave Highsmith. That's the crazy thing, man, uh, you know, that a lot of the older guys shake their heads about because these kids today are carrying on the beef and, you know, they're killing each other over something that the guys who started this have squashed. Like, this stuff is all squashed, man. Larry Hoover, you know, they, they've given him more freedom now. And Chief Malik and the Supermax, and they, they've been seen eating lunch together. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the older guys that started this stuff have all squashed the stuff. And, and yet you got these younger guys still carrying on their beef and killing each other over stuff, man. So, um, yeah, I don't think that we should make up our mind. Well, I, I think the default is that Highsmith is telling the truth. Um, I, I don't know if Larry Hoover, you know, actually said anything to CPD or not. You get a lot of situations where they'll, like, say something and then recant it or, you know start saying something and say, I'm not talking, who knows what happened? Who knows what the real story is? Like, we'll never know. But all I want you guys to know is that, you know, the only version of events that I gave you was CPD's version of events that event eventually went into a book called the uh, a Report on Chicago Crime by the Chicago Crime Commission. That, to my knowledge, is the only place where this incident is documented. So, uh, parents, if you've got gang member children, you know, boys that are going to school I would not just pull your child out of school I would do what I told you know you guys to do in many videos which is just homeschool contrary to popular belief you do not have to be there you know parents may think well I can't be at home I gotta work to homeschool my kid um just enroll him in that let him take the materials if he does nothing I can tell you firsthand, as somebody that's worked in these schools for 12 years, if he's in a gang, nine times out of 10, he's doing nothing in school either. Okay, so it's no loss. He's just safer. It's easier for him to graduate. Okay, it's easier for him to be safe, have peace of mind. He's not around the homies. He's not around the ops. He's not around girls. Okay, and all the distractions that are in school. There's a higher chance, from what I see, that he's going to do well with the homeschooling and if you send him to school anyways, okay, and this isn't even taking into account the danger to his life that just going to some of these places is going to bring to some of these gangbangers. So, man, they've done a lot of restructuring and sending kids to school in rival gang territories, and it's, it's all messed up now. And even, even when it's in their own gang's territory, you know, guys can still walk up into school. And especially now we're removing police from the schools. Very, very dangerous. So... Yeah, if you've got a son that's in a gang, you know, I would not just tell him, like, leave the gang. That's not a solution because once he's in it, once the guys know that he was, you know, friends with them and he was doing what he was doing with them, it's on for life. Like, you, you can't, I mean, he should definitely try to leave if he can, but regardless of whether he leaves, that's not going to get him a pass from the ops, according to gang culture. So, you know, you still got to worry about his life. And uh, homeschooling is the best way to go. But uh, Larry Hoover, according to James Heismith, guys, did not snitch. And shout out to James Heismith. And uh, I know he's working with one of the pastors down there to, uh, to try and stop the violence. Because people can just look at his life and, you know, see all the things that could have happened to him. And, uh, you know, there's not a lot of success stories, guys, coming out of the streets. Like jail or death is how this stuff ends up. So, you know, you might think. You know, you're going to end up like James Heisman someday, man. How many people had to die for that to happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, how many people had to die for, you know, just one or two guys to, to live and make it out? Um, and James Heisman, I'm not saying that, like, you know, it was because of him that all those people died. But I'm just saying the gang war, I'm talking about the gang war itself, GDs, you know, 
all these people have died. Uh, we're talking thousands upon thousands of people have died in, in that war. So, I mean, if one or two make it out and survive at the end of the day, those are not odds that I like for anybody. So, yeah, man, don't don't count on that, guys. Uh, but shout out to him. He's doing a lot of great work, and I, I know he's got materials. I think he's I think he's on social media. I'm not sure, though. But uh, if I can get his social media, if somebody can drop that in the comment section, anybody who wants to talk to him, because he's got a lot of wisdom and experience, you know, from his years. And him and Hoover have squashed it. You know, that's the other thing to take away from this. And Hoover dropped his flat. He's not a GD anymore. He's not nothing. And yet you still got guys killing each other over what, you know, him and his homies started. So, yeah, pe people look at some of these guys like gods. And they're just regular dudes at the end of the day, man. You know, whether he snitched or not, like, he's just he's just a regular dude just like you. So, yeah, man, the only God, the only God is God. I know we got atheists that watch the channel that don't believe it, but, you know, Roll, roll whatever you're gonna roll. I'm not gonna try to convince people to roll what they roll, man. But if you're if you roll Christian, if you roll Muslim, you know, worship God. Don't worship like Hoover, or Chief Malik, or one of these guys. Because, I mean, just look at just look at what could have happened to them. You know, they could have been taken out the game all the way back then. Chicago News. I'm out.